Hi, it's Carola, and in today's video, I'm doing a collab with my friend Gabby, and we're talking about our bucket lists for Paris. So this is not necessarily something you would want to do if you're only here for one weekend. It's more a list of things that you should have done after living here for a year. Though I must say, I have some things on my bucket list that I haven't done here, and I've been living here for three years now. So I'm doing this collab with my friend Gabby and you actually haven't seen her on the channel but I feel like I have done so many videos with her because we did one video for her channel which I'm going to link down below and then we are also doing a huge video that isn't quite finished yet and with the confinement we couldn't work on it but it will be out at some point. So hi guys and thank you Carola for doing this collab with me. Uh, fun that we can do it even though we're on different places. I kind of never done this before. Um, just to present myself very quickly. Uh, my name is Gabby. I am a Swedish expat living here in Paris since I think it's a little bit more than four years now. And I also have a YouTube channel <laughs> like Carola. It's about my life. Uh, cultural differences between Sweden and France, etc. But you know, as Carola said, today we're going to make a fun video for you if you're visiting or going to Paris, kind of a bucket list of things that you should do and our recommendations. Uh, so yeah, I hope you will like it. <laughs> On you go! I put together a few things that I think you should never miss if you're in Paris. Um, so the first thing it is Vilib. Um, personally, I'm such a Vilib lover, <laughs> and Vilib is the rental bikes that you can have a little bit everywhere in Paris. It's very easy to have access. I think it costs around five euros per bike ride, so you know it's quite easy, and it just allows you to travel and see Paris. From a totally different way and uh, so I, I highly suggest you guys to do that if you're ever traveling or living or you're spending time in Paris. Paris has a lot of beautiful parks and one of them is Butte Chaumont and Butte means hill so you can actually walk all the way up the hill and then there's a little viewpoint and it kind of looks magical. Another thing that I very much love with Paris is Les Enfants Rouges, uh, Le Marché. So the market Les Enfants Rouges, the, the red kids, <laughs> if you translate it directly. But it's in the Marais. They have so many cute places there, so many cute small shops where they are send, selling food. You can go there for lunch and just or buy small anything really. So I highly suggest you to go there. And it is very cute for a little brunch or a Sunday lunch. One of the things that is still on my bucket list is going through Montmartre, going to the Place de Tertre and buying a piece of art. I feel like if I buy like one of these little pictures and then I can hang it on the wall and in 20 years someone will ask, oh, where did you buy that picture? And then I can just say, yeah, I bought it in Paris. The next thing uh, to go to do in Paris is definitely to go thrift shopping. You do have a lot of stories. I remember in the beginning, I had a hard time finding them. And, and this is why, as you can see here on these different pictures, where they are and the correct addresses to them. I highly recommend the free pea store because they have like a big, <laughs> a big place there where you can buy clothes for one euro each. And you really have to dig in to the clothes because most clothes are not really, are not very nice, but you can really find something really great there. So I highly suggest you to go there. One thing on your bucket list should be to go to as many free museums as possible. So I link the list of the free museums down below. Some of them are only free under special circumstances and some are free all the time. But you can always leave a donation. Um, there's also a food market in Bastille that I very much like. Um, it is every Sunday and uh, I used to live there when, <laughs> when I was on Erasmus here. It was a few years back and I remember going there um, and going kind of grocery shopping or buying uh, fruits and uh, vegetables. I also highly suggest you to go there around 
think it's 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. right when the market is starting to close because that's actually when you can really find good bargains. I remember one time I went there and I just paid I think three euros for all like this huge amount of avocados. So yeah, try that out. You should go sign up for a class on how to make macarons or how to make chocolates. My personal bucket list includes the course at Tarts and Truffles, which I had planned, but then lockdown came, so it got postponed. And I think another thing that you really have to do is watch the sunset from the Seine, uh, from the Quai de Seine. So just bring friends, bring a blanket, sit there. It's so beautiful, especially in spring and in summer or, you know, early autumn. I highly suggest you to do that. There is also a cat coffee place in, <laughs> in Bestie, which is kind of cute. Once again, uh, there's usually a line outside, so you have to come there in time. But it's they have delicious coffee with a lot of cats everywhere. So if you like cats, that's perfect for you. <laughs> When Paris was a bit smaller, they used to have a train that would go all around Paris and then Paris grew and they stopped the train, but, they'll, but they still have the train tracks and it's called Chemin Vert. And there are a few places in Paris where you can start walking and yeah, some of them are really well made up. One of them is at the station that is called Chemin Vert. Uh, you have to go and eat a falafel in Le Marais. Um, Le Marais is kind of known for that, so I think that's definitely something that you should try. Uh, there are two main places that are very famous, but I mean there are plenty around too, so yeah, try them out. Las Falafel, <laughs> that's the place that's very famous. But yeah, they're all delicious, I've tried most of them. And I always bring people that are coming to visit me to have a falafel there. When you're planning your tour to Versailles, you shouldn't just go visit the castle, but you should also go into the gardens. They are beautiful. And you should grab the little train that gets you to the Petit Trianon and the Grand Trianon. And actually at the Petit Trianon, you will find the hamlet of Marie Antoinette and there, there are animals there. They still are there and people taking care of them. So that was surprising. Uh, Musée d'Orsay, it's actually my favorite museum in Paris, um, mainly because um, of course there are beautiful, incredible art there, but I very, very much like the building. It is an old train station, so it's so beautiful when you go to the top. You have this beautiful view of the Seine. You can also see um, Sacré-Cœur, which is a bit far in Montmartre, but it's just incredible. One thing that I still have on my bucket list is going to the Fragonard Museum and they also offer classes of how to make your own perfume. Uh, Canal Saint-Martin, it is also very beautiful. It's kind of a bit of a hipster area, <laughs> so if that's the scene that you like, you should definitely go there. You can also sit next to the canal, the water there, um, during you know spring, summer, early autumn, and it's very nice. There's usually a lot of people there um, that you can maybe talk to, <laughs> have fun with, you never know. And either way, if it gets too cold, you can always go inside to a cute bar around the corner. Uh, there are a lot of nice places there to go to. So I highly suggest you to try it out. If you're not scared of skeletons, then you should go see the catacombs. And I was there, I linked the video down below, but it didn't feel spooky or scary. It just felt interesting, historic. Another museum that I also very much like, it is Musée de l'Orangerie and, and mainly because they have they, a place for Monet, for his kind of shidden, you could say. So you basically walk into a room and they are just a big painting in the whole room. Like before going there, I'd never seen anything like it and it's truly incredible. And I think this is just one of these things that you kind of have to see. Uh, even if, you know, art is not your, <laughs> your favorite subject or whatever, it's, it's so cool. Um, I know me growing up, I, we didn't really have this in my family that we went to art museums. So this was definitely something that I got to discover here in Paris. And, and this museum just 
wow you know it just takes your breath away so try it and i'm sure <laughs> i cannot be 100 sure but i think that you will like it i hope that you will like it <laughs> If you love movie locations and maybe have a favorite film that plays in Paris, then I'll link all the movie locations that I have already found down below. And it's so much fun to yeah, see something in a movie and then you go to the exact place and suddenly it comes alive. Um, you know, Shakespeare Company, it is also a place to go to. It's like an old bookshop. They have a piano inside, so sometimes there are people playing piano there. Uh, books are quite expensive there though and you have plenty of bookshops around that are cheaper but I still think it is a very cute and nice place to go to um, and yeah the decor inside is lovely so yeah definitely try it out too. You need to do a Paris photo shoot so either you can hire a professional photographer or you just grab a friend and then both of you can go for example through Montmartre and these little streets and take pictures because I feel like those pictures are something that you will want to look at even in 20 years. And you don't necessarily have to stand just in front of the touristic attractions, but I feel like some of the streets are really cute. And these Hosmanian houses, they really do a great background for all the pictures. Another thing that I also love to do, and I actually discovered this while I was a student, because it's true that a lot of things cost in Paris, but this one does not. <laughs> so, uh, go to the Printemps and you take the stairs, or the roll <laughs> rolling stairs, you, you take the stairs all the way up to the last floor, and there you have really a 360 view of Paris, it is incredible. You can even buy a coffee there if you'd like. If not, you can also take lovely pictures from there, which is quite cool. If you're here in summer, then you need to go to the Tuileries Garden. And they have kind of like a summer adventure park. There's like a huge wheel and all these other yeah, things you, that you would usually only find in an adventure park. And it's a lot of fun and it's definitely worth going. So after all the years I've been here, I still remember in the beginning I was 19 years old and I was an au pair back then uh, when I found my fav favorite street here. And it is still my favorite street today. And I highly recommend you to go there. Uh, it is Cours du Commerce Saint-André. And it's really kind of in the sixth and the fifth arrondissement over there. It's just a very cute street. They have restaurants there if you want to try that out. I know it's a pizzeria there. It was under construction, I think, last year, but I'm not sure how it's going to be after Corona is done. Um, and there's also such a cute little paper shop there that you should try out. She sends the most lovely pens, kind of these bookcases and everything. And I always bring people there mainly because I love also the neighborhood, but that particular street is just incredible. When you're visiting the Louvre, you should look up if there's maybe a special exhibition and then buy a ticket for the special exhibition. And then with those tickets, you can actually see the whole Louvre. And that's what I did last time. So the special exhibition that I went to was Leonardo da Vinci. And then I could see the rest of the museum. Except when I was getting tired, I wanted to find a quicker way to get out and there was none. So I actually had to follow the whole tour. So I kind of got a little bit lost. So be mindful of that. Uh, Ile de la Cité is also incredibly beautiful. Um, it's not that far from uh, Notre Dame, for instance. Uh, so I just would suggest you to have a walk there take a coffee there or a tea, whatever you'd like to drink and just enjoy the surroundings because it is so pretty. I cannot make a list like this without saying the Eiffel Tower. Um, Madame Eiffel, uh, well, uh, definitely my top favorite. A bit of a cliche, I know, but I do love her so, so much. So yeah, definitely go there and check her out. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up and please comment down below. 
and I hope you have already subscribed to my channel. If not, then please click down below and also the little bell icon so that you're informed about all the new videos. And please go over to Gabby's channel and subscribe to her as well. I feel like if you like my videos, then you will probably like hers as well. It's also expert experience and comparing countries. See you next time. Bye.